you could put eight on a wagon. So sometimes there were wagons pulled one at a time. Sometimes they were pulled two. And so if you did the math there, there's about 300 trips that were up and down through there. And they'd slide up the uh, farm lane and then slide over. We actually were the first group Looking good. Yeah, to right. put our field into a pre-cut hole. Every other field up to that point had been put into a, a uh, just on an asphalt floor, but there really wasn't a pre-cut hole. Once you figured out how, how, once you got set in there, then you built the sides around it. Our sides were already built. So we didn't have a lot of room for error. And so we had to make sure that our modules got fit very tightly. And the first few rows, they weren't fit as tight as they needed to be. And we had to kind of sit down with the construction company, Karis Construction, who did a fantastic job. They were great guys. And we just said, you know, fellas, we're on a learning curve here. We all are, and we got to get a little bit tighter. Well, that's all you had to say. Come on in. That's it. They were, that was a done deal, and they got right, those things got right back in the line. And we actually brought in Clark Construction Company, who has actually spent some time who actually had put in Giant Stadium and actually helped us put in the Silverdome, brought them as a, in as consultants too, and they provided some expertise. So we were covering all of our bases. There was not going to be any room for error. Every module was given a flag with a number on it and color-coded so that if uh, module number five left here, it would go back in place between modules four and six in the exact same order. So that way as we disassembled the field, if we had a little tear or a rip in the turf out here, when it went back together in the stadium, those pieces would match back up perfectly and we would not have as many repairs to do. With, by the time we got there, 100 rows, by the time we got to the 10th row, row 10 through 95 were just drop dead perfect. Now, you know, you, you get to the last three or four rows, and this is where Spartan Stadium starts to show its teeth a little bit in that it was not built for these portable fields. So it was like I've said, trying to jam a number 14 pill in a size 12 hole. It just didn't want to go in there very easily. So instead of laying tile from the middle out, we had to kind of start laying it from the outside in, the last three rows. Well, now you can't get them tight. So all of a sudden you might have a couple of gaps. And that's kind of one of the reasons why when we were putting the last couple of modules in, we had to do a little bit more wedging than we had to in the first few rows. Now, as far as that last row goes, why you saw people, why you see people cutting saws off, using cutting the modules off in half with the saws off, that's because the field wasn't exactly 100 rows. It was 100.75 rows. And they, we missed just a little bit. So we had to trim some of those last modules to go in, just about six inches or so. And I always kind of thought it was pretty neat that we were able to cut that in half and get that done. I always kind of liked the ingenuity of that bunch that said, hey, this isn't going to whip us. We'll take care of this, and they did. Well, we knew that the field we built here was the exact width and length. Uh, the dimensions were the same as in the stadium. So we had known for a long time which module would be most likely the last one to go in. Here we've got the guy, Mark Collins, who uh, we assigned in May of, of 2001. Mark, this is your baby for one year. You got to grow it in. You got to get it ready. You're in charge of all the mowing, the fertilizing, the watering. You got to make sure this develops and gets ready for Spartan Stadium. So as we're approaching the last day of the assembly of the field, and we knew that they were on the last few rows in the stadium, they'd be working from the outside sidelines towards the center. We determined that you know this would be the last module. We put the, the flag in that to separate it from all the others. Um, we put a Spartan flag on it so that everybody knew that this was the last one. And then we took that last module, put it on a hay wagon all by itself on one wagon and put all the employees that were involved in assembling this field and working on it over the last two years, uh, let them ride the other wagon. And then we used the Department of Public Safety as an escort and we caravan that module into the stadium. As we pulled into the parking lot of the stadium, Eric Atkins, the field manager, uh, came aboard the wagon with me. I didn't know they were going to really do this. Uh, Mark said, come on up, and you know, you know, I'm here, I, this is the last module, and I didn't know we are getting pictures and all this, and he said, here, here's the flag. And I go, and I'm, I'm thinking like, this is great, I mean. We both held the flag up, shook hands, and it was 
kind of a ceremonious passing of the, of the field off. My responsibility was over and Eric's was just beginning. And so that, that was a great moment for me, probably the highlight of my career. That was a phenomenal experience and something I won't <laughs> never forget. Great work, guys. Yeah, well, then, you know, at that point, you know, it is, Eric goes into a, a grow-in mode. There. But now it was just me. It wasn't everybody watching anymore. That, the, big, the big move was done. So, I mean, now it got to be more of a conventional field. They probably could have played a game pretty quick after that, but he wanted to top dress it to make it just a little bit smoother. From the, from the time the field went in in June, I worked about every, I worked every day. I did not miss a day from June 10th till August 31st. Plus, now it's in a new environment. You know, now all of a sudden you've got the sun coming off of those seats, those aluminum seats, and that really heats things up in there. Whereas before it was kind of out in an open air. So you really had to kind of learn, you know, how was this grass going to react to this new environment? Eric spent some time with that. And if he had any questions, he'd call us. We were viewing it all the time, but we were very confident and we were looking at the surface. It was growing, it was establishing, it was leveling. It was, it was really behaving very well. And of course, you know, he gave a lot of tours to a lot of people that wanted to see it. I'm sure in, in the 2003 season, there won't be as many people wanting to tour it. So Eric will be able to do some more things. And, uh, but then, you know, the other thing is, um, you know, we didn't have very many people that had painted a game field either. So they had to be kind of practicing and thinking about that. And, and we hadn't really been managing uh, a natural turf field at all. So they're kind of building that up, building all the equipment up that was necessary for that, gearing up for that. And then of course, in the, always in the back of your mind, always, was, hey, we got five games in a row. That is extremely unusual for college football to have five games in a row. And people were holding their breath, you know, on this new field. ESPN Plus. You're looking at Spartan Stadium in East Lansing, Michigan. They raise the curtain on another college football season as the Spartans of Michigan State play host to the Eagles of Eastern Michigan University. The big story at Michigan State today is the Spartans' new grass. Not only does it make the stadium look better, but the players like it a lot better. August 31st was much different because any little imperfection, it seemed to, be, it seemed to get magnified a little bit. I was a wreck. I mean, we planned, we, we did as much as we could, but it's just that, that opening day jitters that, that I think everybody has, and I was part of it, there's no doubt. Um, nervous as heck, and uh, I'm just glad everything went well. How it performed on August 31st basically was how it performed for the first five games. It was, it was, it was nice that it did not tear up or did not divot, or it, it performed just how, like, how I was, told it would perform, and it did. I'll just chop most of these up, come back. Water, water will make it look a hell of a lot better. It's dry. I was kind of, when I saw the pregame, you know, you, pregame was seem, seemingly tougher than the, the game itself because they're in, they're concentrated in certain areas. But for this game, it just went up and down the field and amazing. And hopefully we'll just keep playing a game I mean, under these perfect conditions, all you know, for the next five. I think that we, every game, learn something about what the how the field is going to react. See, the, it's a living thing. I would say this is probably less than what would happen on most any field. Once we mow it, mow it a couple times, water, give it a good watering tonight. Obviously, it needs it because it is dry and pretty firm. Yes, we are extremely pleased. I mean, you know, when I first got this job, we didn't know at what, what five in a row we could, could do, or, you know, we, heck, we thought after Notre Dame we might have to replace. I mean, back in April and May, we didn't know what was going to happen. We surpassed any, anything we uh, thought we could do. I'm sold on it right now. Now Dale under center, just shy of midfield. Play fakes and rolls to his right, stumbles and falls. Yeah, that's the second Spartan that fell. And I got to tell you, George, I was here early this morning and there was light snow on the field. It's mostly gone as it uh, as the temperature has uh, risen, but maybe the field must be a little slippery. Sure. 
you know, I think what happened in the Purdue game is just, uh, uh, again, I would attribute it back to our learning curve. I mean, you know, we didn't expect the field to freeze, right? That's not something on November 15th we expected it to get that cold and freeze that day. You know, we learned from our issues, and one is we can manage the tarp a little bit better. And then number two, um, we'll have the heating capabilities. Yeah, as, as we speak, we have another graduate student, Mr. Matt Anderson, who's working on a master's degree that's trying to answer some fundamental, fundamental questions about exactly how to heat the field itself. Well, this, uh, this device here is a hot wire anemometer, and what that means is I can measure, I can measure air velocity or I can measure ambient temperature with this device. This is a long project, okay? This project could have started in 1993. The very first time when we put the portable field in the Pontiac Silver Dome, it was logical to think, hey, if we can do it in the Silver Dome when it's inside, we ought to be able to do it in Spartan Stadium outside. By waiting nine years, we actually were able to build a much better field than we would have built in 1993 just because we learned more about uh, soils and the grasses and, and what, how, the mo how it was going to react in the modules. So uh, that was very satisfying to try to build the perfect field. And I think we built as good a field as we could build in 2002. And uh, so for us, that was very satisfying. Um, this is about the image and reputation of, of the institution. Now, the reputation of the entire uh, turf grass program rides on how that field looks. And uh, uh, so far, I've been pretty pleased with that, and I think we passed that test. But it's, you know, it's a challenge. We couldn't have asked for a better test of the field itself. Five games in a row, two weeks off, then two more games, I believe is what the schedule was. The field did very well. It was a good field last year, but it's going to be much, much better this year. MSU people are growing an MSU field, and that, that's a pretty proud um, thing to have happen. You actually got to thank those guys, because he came up with the seed blend and all the other stuff, and he came up with the dirt, or the soil. I think that the turf program, you know, stood up and, and answered the challenge. It is a living laboratory. It's always going to be with us. We all know that if ever something goes wrong and, and grass dies, I mean, you can't do anything to prevent that sometimes. And so there'll be some emergencies on this field before it's over with, but it's, we've got good resources here. And we can usually take care of a lot of our problems. And the turf program in general kind of was on the front page. You always like to see turf on the front page. It's, it's an impressive technological achievement with the turf grass we have here. It is much more complex than simply grass.